Now, I know, I'm not advocating for people to go out there and buy trench coats and go exposing themselves. Although, we, you know, we're getting to a point where you can't show anything. It's funny, sex is more available now in more venues, more easily than ever in time, more obtainable and, and easily obtainable now than ever before. But yet, we're, we're prescribing more and more, we're ma making illegal more and more sexual behavior. It's like force is moving in two totally opposite directions. And you get stupid people caught in between. I have three large windows in my office. If I'm in my office and I'm doing work at my desk where I'm facing the windows, or even if I'm facing my computer, and the school bus stops, I get a lot of deliveries here, I get a lot of, and it makes a sound and then a stopping sound. I will look up and see what's going on because it's happening right outside my door. Children get off the bus and then they go along their merry way wherever they live uh, up in the neighborhood. Again, if somebody were watching me as the school bus stops, the kids go, I'm standing here. And I'm, I'm maybe looking out the door, uh, excuse me, out the window. What am I looking at? Well, first of all, I just want to see what's going on out there. Second of all, I want to see if those same three kids are going to try to cut across my yard again. <laughs> so I can run to my door and yell at them. And third of all, it's just, you know, it's just a general disruption in what, what's going on because it's a noisy thing. The school bus. Now, am I doing it because I'm sexually interested in those children getting off the bus? I don't think so. But yet, isn't the behavior the same? I'm looking at children getting off a school bus. Just like Mr. Pearson, who just lives literally across the street from the school, is looking while he's going out buying ice cream, and this commotion, that he's doing it right when the kids are getting out. You're going to look. You're going to orient to where your environment is, because there's probably a lot of confusion, a lot of noise, a lot of bustle. Is, is there a difference between that and approaching children and asking them to go... I would think they would be, but the distinction gets lost, you see, because of the fact that he is a sex offender, and the neighborhood, the parents, the principal, who just happens to be the sister of the investigating officer, are all alerted to Mr. Pearson. He's a marked man. And so when someone who is a convicted sex offender is looking at a a child, it doesn't matter the context or the reason, there must be something malevolent in that. Whether or not the child initiated that, I don't know. The record is unclear. It says he offered the child a ride, but that doesn't mean that the child didn't first ask, and then the ride was offered. I don't know, but I don't find it really significant either way, because nothing sexual happened. Uh, he's getting food from a vending truck that comes basically right across from where the school is. I mean, it is what it is. I don't see any sexual, again, I don't see an ounce, an iota of any sexual intention. I deal with sex offenders all the time. I treat sex offenders. I see lots of sexual intention related to schools and playgrounds and giving children a ride. I deal with that all the time. I have the 18 years. In this case, it's ridiculous. He did not, there, there's, there's not an ounce of any information that supports any sexual motivation for any of that. And just like you know, we suspend civil liberties because of the fake boogeyman. There's no more kids being per capita being you know raped today than there were 50, 60 years ago. Matter of fact, there probably is less. But the cons what we're doing to make the public afraid and to make the public think that it's in every neighborhood in America. There are these pedophile rapists going to kidnap your kid, murder your kid, or, or harm your ch kid in any way. That, that's what's being pounded into people. At the same time, politicians from the left and right are running a foot race to get votes by being the one who can be responsible for the legislation that has the most negative consequences for convicted sex offenders. And that term, sex offender, is so broad, it applies to uh, the people who rape and murder kids, and it applies to the guy who is pissing in public. There's your spectrum, and everything in between. These are all sex offenders.
nervous about seeing my sisters. A lot of stuff happening with right now. My kid sister, Terry, um, was one of my first victims. And uh, so whenever I hear anything's happening with her, you know, I tend to uh, just want to drop everything and just rush to her side and help her, you know. I mean, like I can't do that with a lot of the other people I victimized. Um, but when it's my sisters, you know, it's like I have the opportunity to be able to try and undo some of the things that I've done. But, you know, now I'm in a plane and I'm like a bazillion miles above the ground and I'm looking through clouds, you know, and I'm like, you know, I, I don't even know how to explain it. You know, five years ago, I was still in a treatment center thinking I was going to die there. There's this kind of like, underlying fear, you know, and that's that's sad for me because I don't want him to fear me. You know what I mean? That's the last thing I want at this point in my life. It, there's so much history, you know, and, and not a lot of it was good, you know. Matter of fact, most of it was terrible. So, how about you, Debbie? Thank you. Huh? I remember the first time that, uh, did I ever touch you inappropriately? Um, you talk to me? Um, I, well, me and Jerry were there. You were playing with us. Yeah, this is hard. Hey, man. Remember how old we were? No. Seven. Seven? Maybe. I don't remember. I remember. One night he came into my room. I was alone. And he penetrated me, and he got through, and I was bleeding, and I was no longer a virgin. That was the last time that you did it, like, one day. I remember that was the last time, it was the last time. That was back, back when Terry had got caught. Uh, Terry had told him, Bobby, and, uh, when I assaulted Terry. Yeah. 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 We assaulted her. I can remember is when we lived in Randolph. Mom had the bedroom downstairs. And I remember, um, I don't know if it was just me and you, but you had got some hot dogs out of the refrigerator. And you had used that to put that up in me. And I'm like, Rita, I thought that, you know, that it was okay to do something like that. The one thing that I don't understand is, and I've said it to you all before, is why you all don't hate me. You know what I mean? And, and if I could, rather than everybody speaking at once, I'd like to start with you. Um, I mean, why don't I hate you? Rita, I sexually assaulted you. I made your life a living hell. I ripped the heads off your dolls. I destroyed your stuff. But it's over. It's done with. It happened. And like you said... Beat the crap out of them. Like you said, it was a way to make us feel good. It was a way to make us feel loved. I love you and Dad. You guys, I've always loved you with all my heart. I know. And when I couldn't get Dad's affection, I came to you and I wanted your affection. Because I love you guys with all my heart. I mean... Always I have and <laughs> always will. I was not the best brother. I wasn't even close to what a brother should be, you know, and I just sometimes I'm amazed that you all even talk to me, you know, and we love you. I took a bunch of mom's pills and she took me to the hospital and the doctor wanted me to see a psychiatrist. And my mom said it was an accident. It was not an accident. Mom want, didn't want nobody to know. I wanted to die. Right. Mom didn't want nobody to know. Yeah. How old did 
You deal with your yeah. stuff. I mean, I dealt with mm-hmm. it because I thought it was normal. Mm. It didn't affect me. I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure it must have. But I think what hurt me more wasn't even you. It was the babysitter. Mm-hmm. You remember when we lived on Otis Street? Yeah, it was the fly. Stopped yeah. I mean, that hurt me more than anything. I went from one abusive family to another abusive situation. And I thought it was okay. I thought it was normal because that's how we grew up. So I figured it was okay. It was okay for him to hit me. You know, I did wrong. I had to be punished. And he had every right to hit me. When you were in prison, you, you would say that no one came up and seen you. I walked to Bridgewater. I walked. I almost got right to go to Bridgewater to see you. That's how much I love you. And then when I was down here, I don't write. I mean, if I could pick up a phone, seven days a week I'd call your ass. much for being a tough guy, huh? <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. I just, I don't know. You know what, I just, I feel like it's important to make um, a connection to what you just said and, and my feelings about how I